The Michelle and Donald DeMore Museum of Fine Arts at the Springfield Museums is home to seven large and intricate etchings by the Italian artist Giovanni Battista Piranesi. Piranesi was born just outside of Venice, but traveled to Rome as a young man, arriving there for the first time in 1740. A multi-talented artist with training in draftsmanship, stage design, architecture, and printmaking, Piranesi became best known for his etchings depicting the monuments and ruins found in the ancient city that he later called home. Popular among grand tourists, Piranesi's prints made use of bold highlights, deep shadows, and strong angles to amplify the visual power of Rome's already impressive antique structures. Detailed and dramatic, technically masterful and compositionally striking, Piranesi's artwork also engaged in an 18th century intellectual debate about the merits of Roman architecture as compared to that of the ancient Greeks. For Piranesi, the Roman civic buildings, aqueducts, and forums that he lived amongst were, quote, proof of the grandeur of ideas and enterprises of the Romans. This particular etching, titled Ruins of the Neronian Dining Room, exemplifies Piranesi's ability to create astonishing views of Rome's ancient architecture. Believed to be the ruins of Emperor Nero's palace during Piranesi's time, the structure depicted here is actually the remains of the Basilica of Maxentius and Constantine, completed in 313 CE. Often called the greatest of Roman basilicas, this massive meeting space once covered an area of over 60,000 square feet. Although only about a third of the basilica remained in Piranesi's day, his etching conveys and even enhances the overwhelming scale of the building. In a striking compositional choice that draws the viewer's attention to the basilica's grand scale, Piranesi filled more than half of the print with a barrel vaulted archway. As viewers, we are invited to stand in this archway's shadow, gaze upon it, and feel dwarfed by its presence. The massive leftmost arch is echoed by two additional arches that recede sharply into the distance, creating a strong diagonal line from the top left to the lower right of the work. In choosing this extreme perspective from which to depict the ruin, Piranesi also created a marvelous sense of depth. In the background, part of the Colosseum is even made visible and conveniently labeled according to a key that Piranesi placed in the bottom right-hand corner of the work. Relatively diminutive figures converse or go about their daily business in the basilica's great shadow. Some even gesture towards the central ruin. Along with the vegetation that sprouts from the top of the basilica, these figures are reminders that life continued amid the colossal artifacts of Rome's ancient past. Piranesi was likely drawn to the Basilica of Maxentius and Constantine because of its scale and potential for dramatic spatial illusion when rendered in two dimensions. However, as a student of architecture, he would have also recognized the ingenuity of the ancients who executed its design. The Roman invention of concrete, developed in the 2nd century BCE, enabled architects to construct larger and more expansive spaces than ever before. Along with improved archway construction, concrete helped ancient Roman builders to literally shape the city's spaces. Piranesi's print pays tribute to such feats of engineering by foregrounding scale and including details such as the arch's deeply coffered ceilings, which were both beautiful and clever. In addition to adding visual interest, these indentations served the functional purpose of reducing the weight of the arch. Evident within this Piranesi print is a characteristic combination of incredible attention to architectural detail with a fantastically dramatic composition that combines grandeur with ruin. Like so many of Piranesi's etchings, it offers an exciting encounter with Roman antiquity as well as the artist's inspired vision. 
In the decades that followed their creation, prints, like ruins of the Neronian dining room, contributed to Europe's collective imagination of the Eternal City. Today, they continue to fascinate, intrigue, and conjure visions of Rome.